Elder Scrolls Online. Where else can you explore the beautiful mountainsides of Skyrim, the sparkling beaches of Somerset, and the fascinating dreamscapes of Apocrypha, all in one game? Become a mage, or an assassin, or even both at the same time. Join the Dark Brotherhood or the Thieves Guild and explore quests and fully voice acted storylines within. Perhaps most importantly though, is that this month Elder Scrolls Online dropped one of its biggest expansions of all time, Necrom, which has added multiple new zones, a new class, and a lot more. If you hadn't noticed this, you'd be forgiven as it's been an incredibly stacked month for quality games. With that said, Necrom is easily one of the best expansions the game has released to date, but maybe not for the reasons you'd expect. I'll explain why Elder Scrolls Scrolls Online isn't what you'd expect in 2023 and more in this video, so let's dive in. ESO was developed by ZeniMax Online Studios, who has sponsored this video. If you haven't already, check out my link in the description below to try out Elder Scrolls Online and its Necrom expansion for yourself. Now, it's no secret that the Elder Scrolls franchise has some of the best lore of any game franchise to ever exist. The lore from Elder Scrolls 1 through 5 made for a great foundation for the Elder Scrolls Online to build upon, and build they did. To date, Elder Scrolls Online has added more lore to the franchise than any other Elder Scrolls game, more than Morrowind, Oblivion, and even Skyrim. The sheer size of this game is absolutely insane, and every ounce of it is voice acted to create the most immersive experience possible by household names like Kate Beckinsale. John Cleese, and Nolan North. This game has spared no expense when it comes to trying to tell you the best stories possible in the most immersive ways possible. ZeniMax has been adding massive expansions to ESO for nearly a decade, and so when I say they've just added one of their biggest and best expansions ever, that's saying something. So what is the ESO experience like in 2023? In ESO, you create a character and you get to choose your race. Do you want to be a Dark Elf, a Breton, a Thirsty Nord, a Magical High Elf, a Sneaky Wood Elf, or perhaps something with a little more fur? Straight away, during the class selection, you're greeted with a new option. With the Necrom expansion, you'll now have seven classes to choose from, being that they've just added my favorite class in the game. Why is it my favorite? I'm glad you asked. It's easy to pick up and easy to play. It looks insanely cool and it's powerful in all the right ways, making it perfect for questing through the zones of Tamriel or delving into the dungeons and raids tucked therein. It's hard to explain why a class is fun to play, but I'll try. Zoss did an amazing job with the visual and the sound design. It really feels a step above the rest of the classes, almost as though it's a culmination of everything that they've learned so far. This spammable also generates crux charges that you can use to fire off your other abilities to alter the way that they behave, like amplifying their damage or their healing or increasing their duration. You can see how many crux charges you have because they'll be floating around your character as they're generated. This creates a mini game within your character's rotation where you build up cruxes to charge up your attacks and then unload them on your enemies for massive damage. One ability that you can use these to fire off is called Fate Carver. This is a laser beam that you can channel through all of the enemies in front of you, absolutely melting them. And this is a good long spell. You are able to fire it off in DBZ fashion for up to four seconds at a time. More often than not, when the beam is over, so are the enemies. If anything dares to survive all of this, it has an ability called Abyssal Impact that shoots tentacles out of its arm, doing massive damage to all enemies in front of it. I bet shooting tentacles out of your arms wasn't on your list of abilities you thought were coming into ESO in 2023. And I can forgive you for that. I didn't see it coming either, but man, I'm glad it happened. One of the most interesting skills it has is Apocryphal Gate. You can use this ability to teleport up embankments or to give friends a ride to your location. I would love to see a version of this skill have more permanence so you could lay it down strategically in group content. Every class needs a great heal, and a lot of times you'll see classes having to leave their class skill lines to go find one. The DPS skill line has an ultimate known as the Unblinking Eye. You summon an eye that lets loose massive damage on your target. The healing ultimate is Vitalizing Glyphic. This ultimate summons an epic cube that pulses heals out to everyone around it. Finally, the tanking line gets the gibbering shield, which acts much like you would expect a shield to act, with a couple of surprises added for flavor. Once you've chosen your class, it's time to dive into the world of Necrom, or Skyrim. Really, the choice is yours straight from the moment you land in the game. Elder Scrolls is a massive open world that lets you go anywhere, anytime you please. So, if you want to dive into Morrowind on day one, and Skyrim on day two, and Apocrypha on day three, you can do that. Follow your axe, or your staff, or your daggers wherever your curiosity leads you. This freedom definitely makes ESO unique, as it allows you to visit your favorite Elder Scrolls areas first, in case there's one you're eager to get to. Once you decide where you want to go, it's never a bad idea to pick up a companion. ESO companions are NPCs that will follow you everywhere, remark on the things you do, sometimes happily and sometimes disappointed. You can give 
gear them up and choose their abilities and have them by your side in and out of battle. Just don't take Ember fishing. She hates fishing. With Necrom, ESO added two new companions. One companion is Sharp as Night, an Argonian warden who has a backstory reminiscent of the Bourne movies. One day he woke up not knowing who he was or where he came from, but he definitely knew how to fight. So you can choose Sharp as Night and help him figure out his story, or you can choose Azendar. How much of Azendar's mind has been lost to the pursuit of knowledge in Apocrypha? It's hard to say, but it's fair to say that there's more than one screw that needs tightening in his head. ESO features hundreds and possibly thousands of hours of quests, so if you want a great story and a relaxing game to enjoy after a long day, ESO is the perfect alternative to Netflix. You can stave off wars, save the world, or simply partake in a game of cards. And I think that's why ESO has been so successful. It's got something for literally every player. The sweaty, hardcore players and the ultra casual players just looking for something fun to do after work. It has it all. It's got loads of content for players that love building up powerful characters to conquer dungeons and raids. Some of these dungeons even take you into secret Dwemer structures located deep beneath the ocean. It's absolutely wild the places you'll be able to explore in Elder Scrolls Online. When you need a break from exploration, the game has more houses than you can shake a stick at. I've played a lot of MMORPGs, and there is no game with a more expansive housing system than Elder Scrolls Online. If you can think it, you can build it. I'm standing in my house right now. Yes, my house is an island in the middle of the ocean with my own personal volcano. It's massive. Necrom is even adding a house that is a ship. Yes, your house is a ship. A ship sailing through the ocean. Pretty awesome if you ask me. Finally, I can live my best pirate life. Do you think I'll make a good pirate? On top of that, Necrom added an earnable mount that players can go out and collect, and all six of its legs are yours if you complete the new zones. The question is, does a mount with six legs have the same climbing traction as a horse in Skyrim? Maybe not, but I think it should. But back to Necrom and the state of ESO in 2023, truly, so far, Necrom has been great. The otherworldly zone of Apocrypha is a blast to explore. You literally never know what you're going to find. Sometimes it's waterfalls that are defying gravity. Sometimes it's monsters that are straight from someone's nightmares. I mean, just look at these things. Each one of these has so much detail and so much flavor packed into them. So why is Necrom one of the best expansions ESO's ever had? And why is 2023 one of the best years for ESO players? Well, Necrom added not one, but two new zones, and it added two companions. It added new delves, new world bosses, and a new trial. And it did all of that while adding an amazing new class to the game. It added tons of new voice acted quests, and started a massive new story arc that will be continued into the future. This makes it a perfect time to jump in and start playing ESO at the beginning of this new story arc. It also has an earnable mount that the average Joe can go out and acquire, as well as the prestigious mount that can be earned from the new trial trifecta achievement. It's really cool to see the devs adding more earnable rewards for the players that aren't able to devote their lives to progging trials every week. It shows that Zoss is turning a quarter that has me very excited for the game's future. Simply put, Necrom added more things and higher quality things than most of the expansions that preceded it, and players are loving it. It also listened to player feedback and added features and quality of life items that players have been requesting. It feels like a bit of a renaissance for Elder Scrolls Online. It's great to see that they are back to putting out massive, high quality expansions. And of course, this expansion features a brand new raid for players to enjoy. This one sends you inside the mind of a friend to save his life. It's a great story and a great experience. On top of all of this, ESO will also be adding a group finder for trials in the third quarter and an endless dungeon in the fourth quarter with what they have described as roguelike mechanics. Details are still pretty sparse on the endless dungeon, but it's great to see that the developers are still willing to think outside of the box to add completely new types of content for the players. And that is why Elder Scrolls Online is not the game you expect in 2023. Its expansion is more impressive than years past. It's got an entirely new class. It's got entirely new companions. It's adding quality of life changes that the community loves, and it's adding completely new types of content that the game has never had before, almost a decade into its life. ESO is really shaping up to be an amazing game for Elder Scrolls fans to play through and explore. If you enjoyed Skyrim or Morrowind or any Elder Scrolls game, you've got to give ESO a try. You can play it like a single player game, or you can make friends with other fans of the series. Like everything in ESO, the choice is yours. 
play Elder Scrolls Online and its Necrom expansion right now using the link in the description below. Elder Scrolls Online Necrom is available now on PC, Mac, Xbox, and PlayStation. If you've been enjoying Elder Scrolls Online or if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and share it with your friends. Massive shout out to my YouTube members for supporting this channel in the big way that you do. If you'd like to become a member for behind the scenes footage, access to a private Discord channel, and more, click the join button below. Sincerely, thanks for watching. And if you're not sure what to do next, check out one of the videos popping up on screen right now.